The victim was a 16-year-old girl called Jane MacDonald. Just like the other five women, Jane had been savagely bludgeoned and stabbed. This time, however, the police hoped that the Ripper had been just a little too daring for his own good. Jane's body was found in this adventure playground off Reginald Street, but the police deduced that she hadn't been killed here. From marks on the grass, they could tell that the body had only been dragged to this spot after the murder. When the attack had happened, she'd probably been here, out on the pavement. If so, she'd been killed in full view of the street. For the first time, George Oldfield personally took over the Ripper investigation, and he was determined to track down everybody who'd been in Reginald Street that night. He threw all available men into the inquiry. He knew that Reginald Street was one of Chapel Town's main thoroughfares, busy day and night, so there should have been plenty of potential witnesses about. And in the case of this murder, unlike any of the others, he found that most weren't reluctant to volunteer information to his men. Incident room leads. For unlike the other victims, the murdered girl wasn't a prostitute at all, but a supermarket worker. Her death stirred Chapel Town from its apathy. And George Oldfield's men found 380 people, both black and white, who'd been in Reginald Street that night. Their movements were plotted on a map. Only 20 people who'd been seen by witnesses were never traced. The police guessed that most were either punters or prostitutes. But unfortunately for the police, they also included the killer. Of the 20 people they'd failed to track down, only one had been standing near the adventure playground at the time Jane had died. He seemed most likely to have been the Ripper. And he was a strongly built white man. But as the police strove to find him, a seventh woman was attacked. The attack occurred in Bradford this time. And the victim was a 42-year-old woman called Maureen Long. Like Jane MacDonald, she was not a prostitute. She'd been attacked in similar circumstances to the six previous victims, but she'd survived. As the police later reconstructed the attack, the Ripper had been daring enough to set upon her near a gypsy camp. Before he'd had the chance to kill her, he'd been frightened off by the barking of